son. We have something wonderful to tell Peter. We're going to have a baby. We're going to what? Have a baby. How could you? How could you? Isn't one enough? Another fudge. Just what this family needs. Hi, Peter. You are the biggest pain ever invented. Another fudge. We're going to have another fudge. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not hanging around waiting for another fudge to be born. Goodbye. Where are you going? To Jimmy Fargo's or maybe to Grandma's. So why don't you scrub up and have dinner? And then you can decide where to go. I didn't want to admit that I was hungry, but I was. Fudge was really interested in the new baby. What kind of baby will it be? Let's hope it's not like you. Why not? I was a good baby. Wasn't I, Mommy? You were an interesting baby, Fudgy. I want to see the baby. You will. Now. Now, now. You can't see it now. Why not? Because it's still inside me. Uh-oh. Here comes the big question. When I asked it, I got a book called How Babies Are Made. Now, now, now. Another five years of this. Maybe even more. And who's to say they won't keep on having babies? No, Peter, don't go. When Peter, I told Peter, Fudge Peter, I was running away, you. he grabbed my leg. He can be really strong. If only I knew for sure what the baby would be like. Take a chance, Peter. The baby won't necessarily be anything like Fudge. But it won't necessarily not be like him either. No, Peter, don't go, Peter. Well, if you think it's going to sleep in my room, you're crazy. Before the end of the week, Fudge asked the big question. How did the baby get inside you, Mommy? Mom read Fudge my copy of How Babies Are Made, and as soon as he had the facts straight, he began telling everybody how Mom and Dad had made the baby. Want to know how Mom and Dad made her baby? Fudge told Henry, our elevator operator. He told the checker at the supermarket. He even told a pregnant lady on the bus. I know what's going inside you, and I know how it got there, too. My new sister was named Tamara Roxanne, but by the time she was a month old, everyone was calling her Tootsie. I had a brother called Fudge, now I had a sister called Tootsie. Maybe what my parents really wanted was a candy factory. I wonder how come I got off so easily with a normal name. Just as I got home from school one day, Mom discovered Tootsie was missing from her crib. She's been kidnapped. Oh, call the police. No, 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 first call Dad. No, call the police. Dial 911. Wait a minute, Mom. Where's Fudge? Fudge? Where's Tootsie? Tootsie? Yes, Tootsie. He's hiding. What are you talking about? We're playing a game. Tootsie can't play. She's too young. I help her. I help her hide. Oh, thank goodness my little Tootsie Wootsie is all right. That was a naughty thing to do, and I am angry at you, Fudge. You must never do that again. Do you love me, Mommy? Yes, very much. Then get rid of Tootsie. I'm sick of her. She's no fun. Someday she'll be fun, but now she's our baby. I'm your baby too, Mommy. You're my little boy. No, I'm your baby. All right, you're my baby too. I know it's stupid, but for a moment, I wished I was Mom's baby again too. Just before summer began, Dad said he was going to take a year off from the agency to write a book on advertising and that he would be moving to Princeton as soon as school was out. It was hard to imagine what life would be like without my friend Jimmy Fargo, my rock in Central Park, or Sheila Tubman complaining about my dog. That dog smells. The house in Princeton was very big and very old. My parents loved it. They said it would be nice to see how we liked being away from New York City. 
It was two weeks before I finally met a boy my own age. His name was Alex, and he lived across the street. He'd been away at scout camp. You want to go into business with me? What kind of business? Worms. Worms? Worms. Wormy, wormy, worms. Don't mind him. He's just my little brother. What do we do in the worm business? First, we go to the lake and dig them up. Then we sell them to Miss Mulder. She pays five cents a worm. What does she do with them? She doesn't say. Some people think she uses them for fishing. Some think she uses them in her garden. Personally, I think she eats them. Worm pie? Yeah, and worm stew, and worm juice. And worm soup? And a worm and cheese sandwich? And worm ice cream. Worm, worm ice cream? Finding worms was no problem. In an hour, we were back from the lake with a whole bunch. Mrs. Mulder likes her worms clean. You know, if you cut a worm in half, you get two worms. Let's cut all these big ones in half. At five cents a worm. Okay, good idea. Fudge took a worm and dangled it in front of Tootsie. She <laughs> likes them, see? You're right. Hey, Mom, look at this. Get that worm out of here. Hurry up, get rid of it, now. It's just a worm, Mom. Don't you like worms? No, I really don't like worms at all. And I never want you to show me one again, understand? See? Isn't he cute? I'm going to call him Willie. Willie the Worm. And he'll be my very own pet. He'll sleep with me, and he can eat next to me at the table, and he'll take a bath with me. I really don't like worms. Do you understand? Is your family always like that? You haven't seen anything yet. The first day of school, Alex and I took Fudge to his kindergarten class and then went upstairs to Mr. Bogner's sixth grade room. I was one of three new kids in the class. Mr. Bogner had each of us tell where we were from. We had barely finished when a message came over the intercom. Mr. Bogner, will you please send Peter Hatcher to the principal's office right away? We're having a bit of trouble with your brother. We couldn't reach your mother or father on the phone, so we're hoping you can help us. What did he do this time? A number of things. I'll show you. You'll see in a minute. Oh, Mr. Green, I'm so glad you are here. He still refuses to come down. Hi, Peter. What are you doing up there? Come on down. No, I don't like this school. I quit. Why did he climb up there in the first place? Because she's mean. M-E-A-N, mean. I have never been mean to a child. She wouldn't call me Fudge, so that's why I had to kick her. He kicked me right in the shin. It's not as if he didn't have a proper name. He has Farley Drexel Hatcher. I told him I would call him Farley or Drexel or even F.D. But she wouldn't call me Fudge. Fudge is a good name for a candy, not for a boy. I think what we have here is a basic personality conflict. So I suggest we transfer Fudge to Mrs. Ziff's kindergarten. Splendid idea. The sooner the better. Halloween night, I wanted to borrow Fudge's false nose and mustache. Give me those glasses. They're mine. You want to trick or treat with us or with the kindergarten babies? Okay, but they're still mine. Before long, we were at Mrs. Mulder's house. Maybe Mrs. Mulder will give us some worms for a treat. Worms? Yeah, she's very big on worms. What does she do with them? She eats them. Really? We think so. Trick, Trick or treat. treat! My, 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 what a cute little ghost. I'm not cute. I'm scary. Do you really eat worms? Peter says you eat them all the time. Did you have worms for supper tonight? Why, uh, yes. Yes, we did. There's nothing like home-baked worms. 
Would you like to taste my special worm cookie? You can't see the worms. I grind them up and mix them in the flour. They're good. You can't even taste the worms. Can I have another? Better than that. I'll give you a little bag to take home. Oh, yes, oh boy, thanks, thanks a lot. Wow. Wow, that's really I good. Really One day, Alex and I planned to have our own picnic by the lake. We told Fudge he couldn't go with us. But I want to go. Why can't I go? Mom's going to make you let me. Mommy, Mommy, please, can I go to the lake with Peter? It's too far, and there's a lot of traffic on that road. I want to go to the lake. I want to go on a picnic, too. Take me, Peter. Take me, too. That's not fair. I want to go. We could still hear him screaming when we were two blocks away. After our picnic lunch, we watched the crew practicing and checked out the bugs at the shoreline. We left at three so Alex could make his piano lesson on time. Did you have a nice picnic? It was fun, but there were lots of ants. Did Fudge finally stop yelling? I haven't seen him since you left. He's probably at Daniel's. He was very angry. Hi, Mrs. Hatchett. This is Ruth Mannheim. Would you send Daniel home now? But we thought Fudge was at your house. My God, where are they? I'll be right over. Daniel's piggy bank is smashed. They've run away. I think they might have gone to the lake. Daniel can swim. Neither can fudge. Why would they go swimming? Come on, Mrs. Hatcher. Let's check at the lake. Fudge's bank is empty, too. Hi, Peter. Fudge, where are you? Guess. I give up. Tell me. At Sandy's Bakery on the highway. Hi, Mom. I'm so glad to see you. Be careful, Mom. You squashed the brownies we bought for you. We're glad to see you, but we're also very angry. And you'll have to be punished, Fudge. Do you have any suggestions? Fudge didn't say anything, but I had a suggestion. Why don't you take away their bicycles for a month? No! No, that's not fair. I think that makes a lot of sense. But how will we get to school? Like you did before. Walk. I'm sorry I bought you any brownies. I hope you both learn that you can't run away every time you don't get your way. Running away doesn't solve anything. We had a good time, so ha ha. And a good lunch. And we showed you we are old enough to ride the lake. So there. Oh, no, you didn't. You showed us you weren't ready for the privilege of riding your bicycle. <laughs> After dinner, we worked on our picture puzzle. Yeah. Why did we come to Princeton? For a change. Speaking of changes, the people who own this house want to live here again. We have to find another house in Princeton or move back to New York City. I don't remember New York. Yuck. I thought we were going to be in Princeton a whole year. We were, but I found out I'm not very good at writing books. So I'm going to go back to work for the advertising agency. I'm not crazy about going in on the train every day, but we can stay in Princeton if the rest of you want to. Yuck. We took a vote, and it didn't surprise me that we decided to move back to the city. Yuck. Tootsie had been saying yuck all day, so even she was able to vote. Yuck! Do yuck! Do yuck! I do too, remember? I remember our apartment and Henry and the elevator. I remembered them too, of course. And Jimmy Fargo, and Sheila Tubman, and my rock in the park, and walking turtle on a leash. I could hardly wait. I picked up Tootsie and swung her around. To some people, there's no place like New York, and I guess I'm one of them. <laughs>